Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and this continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today it is all about the Chesky Records Audiophiliac Sampler. It's a free download available on Bandcamp and I will link to that directly below. But we start off, now I, I met David Chesky, I should explain. I met David Chesky in the late 1980s at some very early Chesky sessions. We really hit it off. I attended dozens, 50, 60, 70 sessions, either working at the session or attending the session. And I learned so much about, well, what the sound of recorded music should be at its best. So anyway, David explains where he's coming from the, the, and the evolution of the sound of the label itself, Chesky Records. So, and the music, oh, you want to know about the music? Well, the music covers a range from jazz, classical, world music, folk music. It's all here, and it's all, it's all about, it is all about the sound of music and making it sound like you are there. So let's hear what David has to say about all of this. So I realize it's, you started in uh, making records in 1988. First one was the Bucky Pizzarelli. Correct. That was before then we were reissuing vinyl. We took the right. Reader's Digest and that's what we did. But the Bucky Pizzarelli was our first session. You're, you were always trying to make recordings that captured the event. That was the that was your premise, right? That's what you were shooting for. Our, our mantra has always been real musicians in a real space. That's our thing. Okay, so they're both good. Think of it as a realist versus an abstract impressionist painter. So that's what we've been doing ever since we started. And it's always been with a single point microphone or two microphones. And that's kind of it. Right. That, so that our, was our sound. At RCA Studio with the C24. Right. I think that was the only mic you used there. And in, in the, for a long time, it was just the only mic, the C24. Yes. Then it was the CalRAC, right? Yeah, the sound feel. We sound moved. Well, here's the C24 had many uh, iterations of it. We modified it. We started to take out the transformers. George K made it transformerless. And now it's a complete system. The C24 we used to have won't operate on its own. And then we moved on to the Calrec. And then we moved over to uh, binaural recording. Now we're experimenting with ribbons and omnis. You know, what I'm going for now is very interesting. I want to go for tonal purity because if you go to a concert hall, no matter where you sit, the image changes. But the most important thing about live music is the tone, okay? And a lot of the old recordings, we love these RCAs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, would not be accepted in the concert hall because the strings are way too bright. Violins don't sound like that. So I'm looking for the perfect mic and preamp combination to create a beautiful song, tone. So if Sonny Rollins was in front of that mic, you're gonna think he's there. Because you know something, Steve? Whether you're a rock and roller and you spend hours rolling tubes for your Fender amplifier or a tenor sax player, it's really about the tone the musician's searching for. At the end of the day, they're not thinking spatial cues, they're thinking, that's my sound. Hendrix with his fuzz box, Tone, too. It was a sound. Sonny Rollins had a sound. So what we want to do is just stay out of the way and capture that sound. So that's the evolution. That the, is the evolution. That's the sound is through these iterations, the uh, C24, the CalRAC, <clears throat> the binaural, and now with ribbons. Right. We're focusing. And ribbons and I have some new special omnis I'm looking into, too, with a special preamp. It's mm -hmm. a combination, you know. So they it's both like, have their strengths. Yeah, but it's like a 32 year, it's, it's, you started in 88, that's the Bucky session. So it's 32 years ago, that's quite a trip. Yes, we've been roaming through the desert for 32 years and we still have not found that holy grail. We, it evades us. You know what, my job is done if you sit in front of your audio system and you close your eyes and you can't tell the difference if it's real or not, then it's time to retire. But we're all searching for this goal, at least I am. So how do you just, you know, so I really believe this in the future, you can live in Tahiti and you have some amazing system, you play it and you're in the Village Vanguard. That's, that's the goal. There you go. That's a beautiful thing, yeah.
it's it's you know i think of it as the journey right it's not it's not getting to the destination it's like getting closer that's what i'm looking yes at. and you know what the closer we get the farther it gets away <laughs> can't catch it it's like climbing a mountain and you say my god here's the ridge i'm on the top and then you look up and there's another thousand feet you yeah, climb yeah. that you get up there it's another thousand feet it just never ends and it's frustrating you get neurotic you think audio files are neurotic about tweaking cables well with microphone diaphragms it's insanity where you place it it's, it can drive you nuts yeah well and it has so that's it's driven me nuts and apparently you too yeah so regarding the sampler amber rubarth is was a really special session as i recall the first one yeah okay but she was amazing right she she how did she, she get to use that was through uh dave eggers yeah i have a duo i play piano and cello with a great cellist dave egger he also recorded my cello concertos so he called me up one day and says i have this girl who's amazing i just did a date with her you know a concert and I heard her and we said, okay, let's go in and do a record. And we kept it very simple. I think it was just violin, cello, and her, you know, yeah. on the record. But that was the scribbled folk. But the first one was just a little uh, cajon, little, you know, little rhythm in the cello, yeah. you know. And we did it in, you know, my friend Herb bought a big church out there. And now we call it the Hearst Center, but it's a giant Greek Orthodox church. It has an amazing ambience, and we just put her in front of a binaural, binaural B and K microphone, and we just try to capture that. For those of us that can hear it on headphones, it should be as close as you can get yeah. to the session. She was such a natural, right? She was at ease. Ease, pleasure to work with, great artist. Yeah, that session just flowed. Yeah. Then there's David Hazeltine. That's piano trio session. Yeah. What's your connection to him, right? You know him a long time, right? I've known Dave. He's just a great player on the scene. You know, in jazz, there's schools of jazz. There's guys who want to take it out, like Coltrane. There's guys who want to take it in, like Bill Evans. Dave is like the Bill Evans school. You know, my band's a little wacky, but Dave is the consummate inside player with a beautiful harmonic language. And that's a very hard art to do because you have to be very skilled to do that. You have to master harmony. So we did that date in the, the church again, and uh, it was beautiful. And also, um, we had George Moraz on bass. He's amazing, he's a great Czech bass player. So what about, what is the African session? Mangi? Yeah. Oh, well this to me is amazing. You know something? We'll take it a step further. 25 years ago, I'm walking in Central Park, and I see a lot of African drummers out there playing. And I'm listening to these guys play, and I'm saying, this is so complicated, no orchestra musician could play this. But they play it like the blues, because that's what their thing, their thing is rhythm. So I said to one of the guys, I want to learn this. So I started taking lessons, and I've been playing for fun in the park, drums, for 25 years. And Mange is one of the great uh, African percussionists. And I said, let's do a record because I have the binaural mic and I want to test the speed. You know, when these guys come, it's an amazing test for transient and impact and speed. When they hit the big drum, you're going to feel it. When they have the small drums, they're going like 90 miles an hour. And it's just, you know, amazing percussion, you know. And that, to me, I think is one of the best things on headphones with the binaural. You put that on headphones and crank it up and you're right in the middle of these African drummers. And it's super dynamic super dynamic and they're just beyond amazing musicians you know marta gomez i met her many years ago um this was pre uh the binaural martha was on the c24 but she you know i stay in touch with her she's a great folk colombian artist with a very light voice if you want to listen to your system and hear a beautiful vocal that's as pure as it gets that's something I would recommend for you guys. And then there's Noah. <clears throat> Noah Wall. Noah. Noah. Well, yeah, Noah actually came via Dave Edgar again because Dave, for some reason, is this classical cellist, but he took a, an affinity for uh, bluegrass music. So he started playing these bluegrass festivals and he met Noah. And, you know, we didn't, we've never done anything like this. We we're a um, pretty much jazz. But I said, you know, we're an acoustic label. And, 
Bluegrass music is really folkloric music. It's an art form and it's very difficult. It's not like, you know, pop or something like that. You know, those fiddle players and all that. And it's an art form. It's, it's jazz, but it's jazz from the Tennessee, you know, mountain area. And she just was amazing. You know, she's just was this great performer. And we put them in a semicircle around the uh, B&K microphone in, in the Hirsch Center Church. And that's another one that uh, stands out in my mind. It's a really fun session to do. You were there. You came by that one. Uh, yeah. And I was amazed because she's, she's not a very big person, but she has a huge voice. Yeah. yeah. She was incredible. Because uh, she's, because they're all, we, you know, we should explain to people, they're all on that one mic. That was the B and K. But yeah. the vocalist in this case doesn't have her own microphone. She's on the same mic as everybody else. She's got to stay ahead of them. You know, let me just say something. When we went to the binaural series, we said usually in pop recordings, the vocalist is right up on the microphone. Okay, and like if you hear Frank Sinatra singing with a big band, you say, well, it's natural, but it's not natural because if the big band was playing with Frank Sinatra there, you wouldn't hear a word he's saying. So we created this artificial naturalness, you know, which is totally fun. But when we did the binaural series, we said we're going to pick musicians and bands that balance naturally. So it is somebody. So the idea when you hear the binaural series is that Noah Walls in your living room, if you just said, come over to my house and play, she would be with musicians that she could sing over and wouldn't drown her out. And we're trying to capture that whole event. Now, not to say that maybe with our next series, we may try to do more fun things and put the vocalists up tight and create something that's beautiful because I'm at the point now saying, you know, all bets are off. We've done everything. Now let's just have fun and maybe create records that are aesthetically beautiful, you know? <clears throat> so Dave, what about you? you? You've made some recordings once or twice. You got some stuff? Yeah, yeah, I've made a lot of recordings. And, uh, but on this um, sampler, it's one of my later ones. It's called España, and okay. it features the two great uh, Spanish guitars, Pepe and Angel Romero. It's for my concerto for two guitars and orchestra. And uh, they're really pretty amazing. You know, this, uh, you know, it's the new one, but, you know, some of the highlights that are not on this sampler that I like, you know, we've done many binaurals over the years and I've done with my band Jazz and the New Harmonic. I think we've really captured that with binaurals, even records uh, that go back to um, my Psalms in Germany. I think that's a good one for people to check if they want amazing string tonality. So there's so many, I've been doing this for so long. My guest today is David Chesky. We have this sampler, this uh, Chesky Records Audiophiliac sampler that there will be a free download to. Thank you for doing that, David. I appreciate it. Happy to be on your show and I love it and I watch it all the time. And every time I want to know the new speaker or something coming out, because guys, I am an addicted audiophile. Well, so, so crazily neurotic about this. Yeah. If I had more money, I'd have a 20 systems in my house. Definitely. Anyway, thanks for doing it, Dave. And thanks, everybody, right. for watching. And I'll see you guys again, including David, real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.